So let's explore an easy schema to calculate u cross v. So let's start by creating a 3 by 3 grid like so. And write down the standard basis vectors i, j, k as the first row. So this is i, j and k. Next, write down the elements of vector u in the second row like so. So this becomes u1, u2 and u3. And then write down the elements of vector v in the third row. So this becomes v1, v2 and v3. So the vectors u and v have been written in a fashion so that the x projection of vectors u and v line up below i and the y projections of u and v line up below j and the z projections line up below k. So in order to find out the first component of u cross v, we will mentally remove the row and column in which i appears and calculate the determinant of the 2 by 2 array that remains. So if we remove the row in which i appears, it will be this row. And if we remove the column in which i appears, it will be this column. So the first component of u cross v will be the determinant u2, u3, v2, v3. And we know how to expand this. So this will be u2, v3 minus v2, u3. All right. Now the second component of uh, the of of the cross product of u and v will be obtained in exactly the similar fashion. So we will remove the column in which j appears and remove the row in which j appears. So we are left with this determinant. It's u1, v3, and v1, v3 except that we add a negative sign here for the second component all right so this expands to minus of u1 v3 minus v v1 u3 this should be u and the third component is calculated uh, just like we calculated the just we, just like we calculated the ith component so we will remove the column in which k appears and the row in which k appears, right? So we are left with this determinant. It's u1, u2 and v1, v2. And this expands to u1, v2 minus v1, u2. All right. Okay, so let's take an example. So let's say if u is equal to 1, 1, 2, all right, and v is equal to, let's say, 2, 0, 3, then u cross v, so let's create the grid first. So this will be i, j, k, and let's write down the first vector, that's u, it's 1, 1, 2. And the second vector that's v so that's two zero three and this can be expanded like so so let's remove the uh, so to calculate the ith or the first component let's remove the row and column in which i appears okay and calculate the determinant of the remaining uh, array so this is one two so th these guys right one two zero three times i okay and for the second component we just add a negative sign and remove the row and column in which the j in which this j appears so it's this column right and it's this row so the determinant of the remaining array will be one two two three so we write it down here one two two three times j and for the third component we remove the column in which k appears right and the row in which k appears and then we are left with these elements one one two zero so let's calculate the determinant of these elements times k okay and this can and this actually expands to 3i plus j minus 2k and sure this can also be written as 
3 1 minus 2 so also note that the resulting vector is orthogonal to both u and v so let me calculate let me calculate u cross v in dotted with u so this will be 3 1 minus 2 dot product with let's see what u is so u is 1 1 2 so we write 1 1 2 here and the dot product would be 3 plus 1 minus 4 and that is 0 so u is perpendicular to u cross v so let's also see if u is per so let's also see if the cross product of u and v is perpendicular to v so let's calculate the dot product of u cross v and v so v is 203 203 and this is simply 6 minus 6 so that's 0 so if uh, so let's say if n is equal to u cross v all right so n will be normal to both u and v so n will be normal to both u and v and n will also be normal to any linear combination of u and v and you can see why this is the case so let's say if we were to take the dot product of n with any linear combination of u and v so let me write it down so it's a u plus b v where a and b can be any scalar so this easily you know expands to a times n dot u plus b times n dot v and that's zero so if u and v are not multiples of each other the span of linear combination of u and v will be the entire plane which is formed by vectors u and v and since u cross v is normal to any linear combination of u and v the vector u cross v will be normal to the plane that is spanned by u and v so i think this is best illustrated with an example so let's say that so let's say that uh, we want to find a plane that uh, we want to find the equation of a plane that passes through the point p1 which is 1 1 1 and p2 which is 0 0 0 and p3 let's say this is 1 2 3 okay so to find the equation of a plane we first need to find the normal vector to the plane and the normal vector uh, in this case will also be perpendicular to the uh, vectors p2 p1 and p3 p2 so the vector p2 p1 is a vector that starts at point p2 and ends at p1 so it's given by subtracting the x and so subtracting the respective components of p1 and p2 so this, this becomes 1 minus 0 1 minus 0 1 minus 0 and the vector p3 p2 would be 1 minus 0 then again 2 minus 0 and again 3 minus 0 so this is 3 all right and so when we say that the normal vector to the plane which passes through p1 p2 and p3 will also be perpendicular to the vectors p2 p1 and p3 p2 what we are saying is that the normal vector will be the cross product of uh, p2 p1 and p3 p2 so let's calculate the cross product of these two vectors so it will be 1 1 1 cross 1 2 3 and we can again create a 3 by 3 grid i j k and we'll write the first vector which is 1 1 1 and the second vector which is 1 2 3 and this can be expanded like so so this becomes 1 1 2 3 times i minus 1 1 1 3 times j plus 1 1 1 2 times k and this easily expands to i minus 2j plus k okay 
So the plane that passes through P1, P2 and P3 will be of the form x minus 2y plus z equal to d where d is a constant and since the plane passes through the origin d will be equal to 0. So the equation of the plane will be x minus 2y plus z equal to 0. You can in fact plug in the uh, x, y, z values from points p1 and p3 to see that you still get the same equation for the plane.